This idea of closing up a region in order to realize a complicated domain as a boundary also works with Green's theorem or Stokes theorem in 3D with path integrals. You can complete a path integral to a loop and then apply Green's or Stokes. Let's take a look at an example where this happens. Let's say I want to integrate the following one form, alpha. 3x squared dy minus 2y dx, and I want to integrate this over a kind of complicated looking path in the plane. I'm going to start at the point 4 on the x-axis and then follow a semicircular arc over to negative 4 on the left-hand side, and then I cut over to negative 3, move up again across a semicircle to positive 3, over to 2, semicircle to negative 2, over to negative 1, semicircle to 1, and I end there. Four semicircular arcs, three straight line segments across the horizontal axis, that's a total of seven paths to compute the integral of alpha. Now, it would seem as though I would have to parametrize these paths and then do the seven different integrals. That's not going to be so bad, but that's, that's really not ideal. There's a better way to do this. Let me show you how you can apply, in this case, Green's theorem. First of all, let's notice that when you take the derivative of this one form, you get something that's pretty nice. What is d alpha? It is 6x dx wedge dy minus 2 dy wedge dx. There's a common factor of dx wedge dy here. I'm going to have to be careful with the signs. When I factor out the dx wedge dy, I get a 6x plus 2 out in front. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this path is not the boundary of some enclosed region. It's an open path, and I can't apply the independence of path theorem. But I can use Green's theorem by closing up this path. What I'm going to do is add a straight line segment from the end point of 1 to the start point of 4, moving along the x-axis going to the right. Now, when I do so, I cancel out the path from 3 to 2 going to the left, and I'm left with paths that are the oriented boundary of an enclosed region in the plane, a disconnected region of sort of two half annuli as pictured. Now, here's the thing. That path that I added contributes nothing to the path integral because it's moving along the x-axis. And along the x-axis, dy is zero, so that component of alpha doesn't contribute. And the dx component has a negative 2y out in front, but along the x-axis, y vanishes. So adding this path didn't change the integral at all, but it allows me to use Green's theorem. So the integral of alpha over this path gamma is the same thing as the integral over the boundary of this enclosed region. I can use Green's, convert that to a double integral over the interior of this disconnected domain, where the integrand is d alpha. That is 6x plus 2 times the area 2 form. This is just plain vanilla area in the plane. Now notice that 6x is odd in x, and I'm integrating over a symmetric domain in x. It's symmetric flipping about the y-axis. That means I can eliminate that term in the integral. I'm left with the double integral of 2 dA. That's twice the area, and you know how to compute the area of this region. I just take a bunch of circles and add and subtract. What are the radii? Oh, well, the outer one has radius 4, and then that inner annulus has radius 2. So because of the 2 out in front, I get some nice cancellation. And what I get for a final answer is pi times quantity 4 squared minus 3 squared plus 2 squared minus 1 squared. That's how you can use Green's theorem to reduce a complicated path integral to something that's not so bad. We were able to do that in our head. Now, you might think, oh, this is a weird example. I'm never going to see anything like this again. And that might be the case. But if you take a course in complex analysis, which I hope you do, then you are going to see this exact procedure repeated over and over. And you saw it here first.